In today's video, I'm opening up the Apple Sheep brain into exactly how Apple can take more of my money away, which is, I think, what we all want. But mostly because I've been using my iPad Pro for video thumbnails and some general media consumption, but also using my MacBook Pro for work, and I keep thinking to myself, what's the best way these two products could become one? Let's begin. <laughs> So I have many times said in the past that oftentimes combining products does not make them better. You know, there's a lot of two-in-ones that are not worth it because they result in a crappy replacement for two products. Essentially the term jack of all trades, master of none. That's how I've described foldables. That's often how I've described a tablet and laptop combined products. But I actually think Apple could do it better than most because they have the software out there to allow for an optimized, clean, and intuitive tablet experience. That's why iPads kind of dominate the tablet space while simultaneously having access to really professional and really capable Mac OS software that's really great on their laptops and desktops and I use those regularly. So when thinking about combining the two I realized that it's probably easier to turn an iPad into a MacBook than it is turn a MacBook into an iPad and before any of you start saying if you want that do an iPad or if you want that buy a Mac. I hate that argument because there's a lot of people that want both okay. I don't think you should have to choose which features matter to you with each product or be forced to buy two products because I find that inefficient. It's not very minimalistic, which Apple likes minimalism, as do I, and I would love it if in the future I didn't have to decide every time I take a trip, is this just an iPad trip or just a MacBook trip or is it a both trip? No, I just want to take one thing with me and find a way to make the iPads better and the MacBook better. And for the record, today's product pitch is not a replacement to anything in Apple's lineup. I'm talking about something that can coexist with the pre-existing MacBook Pros with the current iPad lineup. They don't have to change or remove anything. This is just a new product category. Basically my wish list for how Apple can combine these things. So for one, you gotta offer a dual boot Mac OS option on the iPad, which to me, I know there's people out there that are like, no, that's gonna be too complicated or iPad OS is fine for what the iPad needs. First of all, no, it isn't. You're wrong. If you were right, there would be a calculator app by now. Secondly, if Apple is comfortable with dual booting third party operating systems, Systems, I see no reason for them to be against dual booting first party operating systems. And before any of you say, well, an iPad's an iPad and a MacBook's a MacBook, stop trying to combine the two, then why the heck is Apple selling keyboard cases for the iPad with a trackpad and a keyboard? Why sell those if an iPad is just an iPad and it's not supposed to be more than that? In my view, there's no need for those accessories unless you're going to start optimizing for a desktop or laptop type experience. I've gone back to using my iPad without a magic keyboard and it's honestly just fine. I don't have any complaints with it since getting rid of my magic keyboard case but I would love a magic keyboard case in the event that we could dual boot Mac OS on this thing because an iPad has Apple Silicon which is now what MacBooks are powered off of it has a display which is what you need for Mac OS I'm fine if the touch display doesn't work when you switch it to the Mac OS mode that's the same thing that happens with sidecar or you can have it just work with the Apple pencil to provide that extra level of precision and drawing capability for certain Mac applications or 3d models applications. You don't need to like re-optimize all of Mac OS to work with a touchscreen. Just turn it off just like you do with Sidecar. But then if I switch back to iPad OS, yeah, we can take advantage of the touchscreen. Of course, I want it to retain Face ID, but similar to the size of my MacBook Pro, I now want a 16-inch iPad Pro Max, if you will. Sort of like my concept video in the past, but we have more information now. This would allow for a Mac OS running device to have Face ID, to have center stage. Still, of course, mini LED and 120 hertz that goes without question but now you'd even have cellular connectivity on a laptop which the macbooks still do not have and an ultra wide field of view for your webcam so you can walk around and have the camera track with you and yes this display would be much larger maybe this ipad is more prone to bending but in my view this product would be shipping with the magic keyboard case by default so yes you can still take the ipad off of the keyboard case and use it just as a tablet but they're building this thing from the ground up for the mac os experience, which means, yes, a keyboard and mouse is included. It's not some optional accessory. So yes, the product I'm describing will be very pricey, probably more expensive than the MacBook I just bought, but it would be far more capable because I wouldn't have to pull my iPad out every time I want to use an Apple Pencil. I could do my video thumbnails on one device and do all of my intensive Final Cut video editing on this device. The IO, in my opinion, would be a bit of a compromise because I'm not sure how I feel about MagSafe 3 coming to the iPad Pro. Obviously, 
it might line up in some concept artwork, but the truth is iPads in general are much thinner devices than MacBooks, so you likely wouldn't be able to throw an HDMI port on here, and you might have to just go all in on Thunderbolt connectivity, and while it may be technically possible to add an SD card slot, the iPad Pros don't have headphone jacks anymore. So for the sake of consistency, I'm just gonna say we go all in on Thunderbolt ports on this concept because you could still convert any one of these Thunderbolt ports into an adapter that brings back all of the ports a MacBook has, as long as I can plug in external monitors, which Mac OS can take advantage of, and CFAS card readers, SD card readers, audio amplifiers, and that kind of thing. Granted, this might not be the perfect replacement for every MacBook out there, but for me, I can live with just Thunderbolt. So I'm okay if I don't have MagSafe or the HDMI port, just as long as there's four Thunderbolt 4 ports on this thing, that would be awesome and also helpful to the people out there that are like, I just want Thunderbolt ports on the MacBook. I don't want all these legacy ports coming back and I would rather have as many Thunderbolt ports as possible. This iPad Pro Max I'm describing would be capable of doing that. You'd still get a full-size keyboard, ideally, and a decent size trackpad, unlike the kind of reduced size trackpad you have on the current Magic Keyboard case. And the big difference here from my last wish list is that now I want M1 Pro and M1 Max to come to the iPad. So yes, this larger size device might end up drawing a lot more power, won't be as efficient as the current iPad Pros, but we know Mac OS can take advantage of this crazy Apple Silicon power, and we know Apple is comfortable with iPad OS having an insane amount of overhead by putting the M1 chip in an iPad, with very little use cases in my view that can take advantage of that. The biggest argument is just, well, overhead. We want it to last a long time. By that logic, putting the M1 Max, which is an insanely powerful chip, into an iPad Pro is not that crazy. And this, I think, could kind of forgive a lot of people that miss the touch bar or miss the 2016 to 2020 MacBook Pros because now instead of just having a touch bar you'll have an entire touch interface if you want to in Mac OS mode you could just put the touch bar at the bottom just like you do with sidecar and still have your touch bar for those who care about it just have your Thunderbolt ports for people who preferred those days and prefer that aesthetic and you'd also have Apple Pencil compatibility so for drawing applications you could take advantage of that this would just be the most ultimate Apple powerhouse that I could see myself easily spending $6,000 or $7,000 on if I knew that there was like an 8 terabyte storage option, still the insane RAM and graphics capability of the M1 Max chip, but now you've got the same size display as the 16 inch MacBook Pro, still XDR, still high refresh rate, but you get Face ID, which a lot of people were preferring, you get center stage, which is something I was really hoping for. The speaker quality might come at a bit of a compromise with this setup because the speakers on iPad Pros have to be on the side, but my current iPad Pro speakers are still pretty good, so I guess if I'm combining two products into a one hybrid device, I'm willing to take that compromise in speaker performance, and the bendability, of course, is going to be very high, but again, I expect this thing to be consistently used with the keyboard case, and it comes with it in the box. Two smart connectors on the back for faster charging through that keyboard case itself, and of course, you got a rear-facing camera, so if you want to take this thing out of its keyboard case, or when you're at a group meeting or a FaceTime call and you want to show people what you're looking at, you'll have really, really high resolution cameras on the back and LiDAR for your 3D modeling stuff. No MacBook so far has the rear facing camera stuff. So this iPad would be capable of doing all of that. You could get some great 4K at 60 B roll. I assume, yes, this thing should be able to shoot ProRes as well. You've got the great software optimization of iPad OS if you want to go all in on touch, but if you want it to be your Mac, it can be your Mac. So the way I see it, this hardware should complement Apple's really, really impressive software. And right now, you know, Apple's not interested in turning the iPad into anything more than, you know, some drawing, general media consumption, checking email and that type of thing. So yes, at the end of the day, I still have high hopes for the iPad and I still wish it to become more. And the concept I'm talking about in today's video is what I think would actually get me to upgrade my iPad Pro. Essentially, the way it is in its current state is pretty dang hard to beat. And I don't think I'll upgrade my iPad Pro for a long time. But if they started pitching ways in which it could replace my MacBook Pro, that's when I could start to justify it. But the only way it can replace my MacBook Pro is if it gets larger with a 16 inch size, if it gets the M1 Max chip and it's just as fast, if not faster than my MacBook Pro. And it has some insanely good IO, like four Thunderbolt ports. And I don't really care if it has the fast charging tech, it doesn't need the 140 watt brick. USB-C can't sustain that anyway. So not as important to me, but just having a keyboard and trackpad and a touch interface with all of Apple's greatest silicon to offer. Yeah, I would not be shocked if this thing started at $3,000 and 
and a lot of people didn't end up buying it but I definitely would I want these products to combine and I have a hard time seeing how it would be bad at being both I think it could do both jobs really really well so feel free to let me know how you feel about this concept if you would be interested or willing to purchase a product that combines your iPad and MacBook into one down in the comments below this is your option here I'll see you in the next one